a lot of the other decks for uh, for having like one or two secrets because it's more expensive in Mage, for yeah. example. Um, so we did learn a little bit about the secret. Let us know what you guys think. Hashtag HCT and uh, tweet at us. And of course, uh, never invite Raynad to your card reveal parties from this point <laughs> forward. With that, let's introduce our players. Our first one for this first semifinal is Amnesiac. Yeah, Amnesiac, he's played super well thus far, and he did bring that bold deck lineup. He does have the Murloc Paladin. Uh, he does have the Rogue, one of two players to bring that deck. So uh, he's got to play a lot of games today if he wants to, to make it to the Grand Finals and win the Grand Finals. So it's going to be a grind for him, but I can tell he's ready. Yeah, he's uh, very much rested and full of energy despite starting off the day uh, with that very difficult win. Our second player, he is a first seed in his group. It is Al Sky High. Al Sky High, Chinese American player. Says he's doing it for his QQ group. There's actually a lot of big name players in that group. Silent Storm, uh, Neobility, he's always on the top of the ladder. So uh, his practice partners are top notch. Mm -hmm. And we'll see if he can make that kind of name for himself as well if he does uh, continues to do well in this event. Yeah, pretty much all of Team Celestial, they started pulling their talent, or sorry, pooling their talent directly from this QQ group immediately. Uh, and I know you've played against them a lot on ladder, Raynad, and that's just a testament um, because Raynad's usually at the top peaks of ladder. <laughs> you do have jumps, I like that. How do you how do you actually uh, gauge this matchup? It's a very difficult one for both these players. Yeah, I mean both players are strong. Both had pretty convincing runs through their through their groups. Uh, I, I really do think it can go either way, and I, I wouldn't say anyone has a clear edge. Mm. Well, I think taking a look at their lineups, there definitely is some differences. The Rogue being one of them. Yeah. Uh, TJ, let's take a look at uh, how their lineups break down. In fact, TJ has been diligently tracking all of the wins from each class, and he has some really interesting ones. What are the ones that stick out to you? Uh, the two that stick out to me the most are probably Warrior and Druid. Uh, Druid was the uh, worst performing class across the entire weekend. Mm -hmm. um, it was banned a lot, but it was still played um, tied for the most, and it had the worst win-loss record. Uh, the one that, uh, another one that means a lot to me is the Warrior. Warrior, we expected a lot more patron than we saw. We, we saw a lot more control, and Warrior's been the best performing deck so far, uh, along with Warlock. So uh, it's really cool to see that the inclusions that these players are making in their Warrior decks with Gore Howl and uh, making it more removal-centric. That deck is super strong in the current format, and both of these players are rocking a similar type of form of it. Dude, it's so funny to me, man. This Murloc Paladin keeps getting banned over and over, and I get why relative to the strategy, but you bring such a unique deck to the format, and all of a sudden, no one's going to be able to watch you play it. Feels kind of, I feel, I feel like teased a little bit. Ah, uh, yeah, it, it's a cool deck until you see a lot of it. A lot of the matchups are very, very swingy, so the players feel like, okay, if I just queue the wrong deck into this, I almost can't win. So mm. a lot of the players here are pretty confident in their skill, and they'd rather get those 60-40 matchups and, you know, try to get edges through their play and not through picking matchups. Gotcha. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Let us know what you guys think as well. Hashtag Al Sky High or hashtag Amnesiac. Uh, I think there is a lot riding on this match, not just to go to the finals as well, but, you know, a lot of people question the establishment of the known players, and Amnesiac is the final remaining player from that establishment. He comes from Team Archon, which is a uh, part of the group of collected teams along with Liquid, Tempo Storm, G2, Navi. You have all these teams that are well-established, but guys like Al Sky High, not on a team. Guys like Chess Dude, definitely not on a team. He's very much unknown. Uh, so if Amnichek goes down, we'll have, for the first time, a player that we did not expect at all going into the Winter Championship to be the victor. Yeah, it's it's sort of a big deal. And Amnesiac, I think he's proved that he should remain in those respected top players mm -hmm. just based off his performance so far. But we'll see how he's going to do. Druid vs. Warrior to start it off. We talked about this before, Raynad. Yeah, some people claiming claiming that Warrior is now favored. I'm still a little bit in the Druid camp, but it's so close. It's it's yeah. like the difference between 55% and 45%, you know? Uh, can really still be anyone's game. Uh, both players are just going to take their time in mulligans, see see what the other player does first, it looks like. But yeah, the, the Druid is going to be looking for things like ramp. Amnesiac is aware that this is Control Warrior, so we might even see him keep the Ancient Allure here. Yeah, I think it's uh, extremely important for Drew to get those early curves. But like you mentioned many times in your very thorough analysis, Raynad, that Ancient of Lore keeping in the opening hand of Druid might even be one of the most valuable things you can do in your mulligan. Because if you 
you know, Drew can deal with some of the threats, but if you keep the gas going, uh, eventually they might run out of their own hand because they don't have great draw mechanisms either. Yeah, that Shade and extra ammo is not too shabby either. It's actually the best tool, in my opinion, that Druid has against Warrior. Really tough to interact with. You can never really give them a good brawl to deal with it, and it just threatens combo at a certain stage of the game. And Mujak was like, he just kept the whole hand, which makes some sense. It's a reasonable curve, and... Or maybe we, maybe we tuned into it after the mulligans, yeah, but... Yeah, uh, I'm not quite sure, but, you know, Ancient of War Keep is sort of a, a risk assessment type thing where if you do have the threats to play earlier on, it's a good keep, but if... Ancient of War is like your only keep. It's kind of risky because you do need to apply pressure early against the warrior because you don't want to just give them time. Yeah, the uh, in, the interesting thing about not playing stuff into the warrior's game plan is is that all, the, all their early game interaction is just removal. So if you're not doing anything, they're also not doing anything. So in a lot of cases, yes, you're giving them like more mana to deal with stuff later in the game. But this is one of the control decks that it's kind of okay to give time to because for every turn you skip, they, they tend to skip one of theirs. Uh, but yeah, Living Rate coming out here turn one, it's actually a card that, you know, it, you're not really excited about about it in the Warrior matchup, but, uh, you know, some Warrior lists these days don't even play cards like Armorsmith, so it, it actually gives some pretty good pressure, keeps armor down. You don't really want to War Axe that twice. Yeah, it's a good observation. Um, it's, it's just so inefficient to deal with it as Warrior. Outside of cards like Armorsmith, and in this case, the Cool Taskmaster, he chose to Revenge straight up as well. That's good value yeah. that uh, Jack got out of that. Real yeah. Taskmaster seemed like the higher value exchange there, but all sky high recognizes it's pretty tough to get good value out of revenge. And also, the later the game goes, sometimes you need to keep Cruel Taskmaster to proc and execute, or even later on in the game, with the new type of warrior deck, it can be hard to close out a game. You'll keep removing threats and you'll keep removing fre threats, but then you'll draw Grom and you don't necessarily will have an activator for it, so it can help later to close out the game. Yep. All sky high, also aware he's already got that big game hunter in his hand. Maybe he wants to save Cruel Taskmaster to bring an opposing Ancient Allure up to seven attack, kill it off with BGH. But yeah, second Living Ritz, just gonna give him New Jack something to do before he develops his shade. Let's him basically save his coin. <laughs> Well, I really like that uh, observation that Cool Taskmaster and Big Game Hunter has some synergy there. I think that's something that's really powerful to swing tempo back, because something that Warrior does sh struggle with is efficiently removing it without losing a ton of health, right? You, you might take a weapon hit and take that five damage anyways, and all of a sudden, uh, you're in the range of just dying to a Savage or yeah. In true Hearthstone fashion, Amnesiac draws Wild Growth as soon as it's terrible. And uh, just gonna develop Shade, get that going, so that he can threaten a combo pretty early in the game. Yeah, we've all been there. You know, Wild Growth still has some value um, in the late stages at least, but if he keeps drawing spells, maybe we do see a Wild Growth into an Ancient of Lore as well. Sometimes yeah. that does exist, but we'll see. Yeah, I, I mean, he can sort of make that happen over the next couple turns. If he plays Powder Shredder this turn and can fit in a Wild Growth the following turn, it right. makes his Ancient of Lore come a turn sooner, mm -hmm. which is a big deal because spacing out your threats and having threats to play, and even just one being able to combo one turn sooner can make the difference. Not giving the warrior time to draw into that extra, you know, shield made in, shield block, bash, and those types of things. Yeah, I, I like this also just because, again, the Fire War Axe challenge is the Shredder. And I think he's just realizing right now that he, this is the best time to use Wild Growth. Otherwise, he's just not going to use it for a while. Uh, and it's he's anticipating that he'll be able to draw better. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see Acolyte Taskmaster come out here. I think it is better to Taskmaster your own Acolyte rather than killing the 1-1 one -one off. But this guy has some options. Could just see an armor here as well. He's gonna he's gonna make the, the board for more board or the play for more board presence, which I like a lot against Druid. Uh, you definitely just want to develop any kind of minion you can against the deck to kind of supplement your removal spells and clearing the board. I think you also always want to get or try to get immediate value out of Acolyte of Pain in this matchup because as the warrior, you don't have many good silence targets. So your Acolyte of Pain is almost always going to draw a Keeper of the Grove uh, for the silence. So if you play by itself and don't utilize the cool Taskmaster to get the extra draw, a lot of times you don't get any draw out of it at all because Keeper of the Grove, if it's there, will be used. That's definitely a good point. Yeah, Acolyte and War Axe gonna allow All Scott High to uh, just get rid of this 2-4 pretty effectively. And I suppose he'll develop a Shield Maiden right after that. Gorhal is a card that is just so incredibly powerful in these removal-based warrior decks that kind of give you inevitability throughout the game. Make sure that you'll always have enough cards to deal with all of their stuff. Uh, but against Druid, it really gets you closer to that magic number of 14 very quickly that the, that, uh, the Druid's trying to get you to. So. Very dangerous card to play against Druid, but if you can ever develop it on a board where you're ahead, it puts you in a great position. 
Yeah, it's true, because Gore Howl just runs them out of threats eventually, but that's assuming you just don't die yeah. uh, by the time you keep lowering your health. So I, I personally love Gore Howl as a card as well, but it is one of those really dangerous dances because he's going down to 21, and then you have to kill the next threat with your Gore Howl. Yeah, that was a really interesting attack by Shade uh, from Amnesiac. Uh, he just got punished really hard for that. I mean, Allskaya now has Gore Howl developed, a ton of life to play with, if he can draw into things like Shield Block or Shield Maiden or just anything that like provides armor, bash, uh, he's going to consistently be able to kill one minion from Amnesiac, while Amnesiac can really only develop one or two minions at a time. He okay. Might, he might have been hedging his bets against Brawl because he knows that he was going to be playing creatures the next turns, over the next couple turns. So getting the value on that shade that turn, hoping that he doesn't have removal and playing around Brawl for the following turn. Sure. Uh, could be why he's trying to efficiently get in damage. It's a possibility. I mean, he also saw Taskmaster Revenge. Maybe he doesn't have activators to execute. Yep. There's probably a lot of reasons why he thought it was okay, but he did get punished, like you mentioned. And that Gore Howl behind the Sludge Belcher will make it logistically annoying for Druid to get through. Another wild growth picked up right on time for Amnesiac. <laughs> so I think we're going to see nine. a swipe to, to help him clear out here, maybe with an Emperor. There is an option where you Wrath here, I suppose, instead. Yeah, a few options. Either way, I think we're going to see Emperor get developed. And Mijak's just going to look to cycle that Wild Growth next turn and just really looking for combo at this point. Mm -hmm. I do like the idea of cycling Wrath uh, eventually here, just because um, you want to get close to that Force of Nature Savage Roar. And I do know that players have even thought... Oh, that's pretty funny. Um, I, I know that players have even thought about saving Emperor until they can guarantee get it at least on two pieces of Force of Nature Savage Roar combos. So that way they can guarantee a double combo if they draw into it. Yeah. The Innervate actually works out well. Um, it allows him to Emperor coin Innervate swipe if he wants, uh, which gets him deeper in his deck with the uh, cycle from Wrath, but also allows him to develop Emperor, but he actually decides not to. Yeah, Amnesia Akir is actually going for most likely a very like macro strategy. He's going to cycle that Wild Growth next turn, so he knows he's drawing two cards. He's looking to potentially double combo Sky High at this point. He's got the Innervate, he's got Emperor Thorson uh, trigger next turn to do it. So he's just looking to pick up a Force of Nature and a second Savage Roar. Well, in this case, if, even if he, if, if Al Sky High just armors up, I believe he might even just be range of dying to one Force of Nature yeah. Savage Roar. I don't think it's intuitive to just bash right off the bat when there's nothing on here. But at the same time, you do recognize he might have the opportunity to kill you. Depends on this draw here. Still two forces in the deck. He still can cycle and innervate for that. It's not out of the woods just yet. But is it worth the risk? Yeah, he can... Wild Growth would still do it because he has the Innervate for the combo. There's a chance, TJ. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh right There's still a, chance, There's still a chance, Here's still a chance, TJ! <laughs> we can dream! No. Nope. Oh. Close, though. <laughs> uh, but Mijek's got those two Innervates and just all the mana in the world to play with, so I'll probably see him run those out here to develop a minion. Whether that's Emperor or Shredder, not sure yet. Emperor Thorson does die to... Oh, really? He's just not going to develop a dude. Okay. He still has him in combo range. Yeah, so some people might be wondering, you know, Amnesiac, you're not going to get full value out of these Innervates. Why are you not playing more stuff? And the reason is Amnesiac hasn't really seen a brawl yet. We saw him kind of respect it earlier in the game with that first shade attack. So he doesn't want to make his current shade an extra as vulnerable. And he's just going to wait to try to draw the combo to take advantage of it. I like the hero power as well because he's still threatening the lethal and he has oh. it! Oh my god! That's 22 yeah. because he has the ability to squeeze in the hero power as well. Yep. So Alska High did use Bash Face to play around just combo, but he didn't calculate what it would be with Innervate. I mean, there's some things that you just can't play around. You, you can't go above and beyond to play around every possible out that the Druid could have, so. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, this is just one of the reasons. I feel like Druid's a little bit favored. You get to that mid game and you just threaten combo to win the game from absurd life totals. And then you see right there, Mijak uses Code Force and Nature to take 100% off of Sky High's life total. <laughs> Very effective discount last time I checked. Yep. And, uh, well, Sky High from that position is going to have to find a way to rebound, but I don't think he was feeling very optimistic from the very beginning, even though those Druid decks uh, and you know are, are much easier when you have lots of those early removals. The, the fact is that the Druid hit a very solid curve. It had plays from even turn one. 
And that's a uh, that's something that Druid didn't really have, you know, five months ago, back when people were really saying Druid was favored. And I think Al Sky High overall, his lineup's weak to the Druid. His ban was probably, you know, a torn between the Druid and the Paladin. And he figured whichever one I don't ban, I can accept a loss. That's something that you can do in Conquest is you can accept that you're going to lose to one deck because you can still take good matchups in with your opponent's other two decks to take the series. So I don't think Sky High is going to be too upset about that match or sure. uh, think about it too much because he was probably expecting that one of his decks, since his lineup was weak to it, was going to lose to Druid. Take a look at the polls, by the way. It's an overwhelming percentage of people who are tweeting for Amnesiac here and sending the support. I think uh, not only is it the fact that he's more of a known player, but also seeing the interview with uh, Momnesiac, of course, and uh, watching his stellar play. I think it's the fact that you bring Rogue to an event. When you bring Rogue, it's already a bold statement saying, uh, you know, screw the haters. I'm just going to do my thing. And, you know, he's been successful with it. Both Rogue players are still in the tournament here. Yeah, and bringing Paladin, but not Secret Paladin, also gives you probably a big bump in, in fan support. So uh, that's definitely something that probably weighs into a lot of people's decisions. Murloc Paladin, while uh, you don't see it very often, a lot of people like to watch it and like to support mm. people that bring it just because of the flair of the deck. Absolutely. So it's going to be tough for Alskai to climb back into this series. Let's get to know him a little bit more before we get ready for Game 2. My name is A.R. Skyhai. I'm 21 years old now. Skyhai is from a Japanese anime called uh, Bunny and Tiger, and it's a character called Skyhai. At first, I played Hearthstone casually, um, but after I joined the QQ group um, and meet those professional players, I started to play against them and beat them, and that gave me a lot of confidence to play competitively. A QQ discussion group is um, where the Chinese American players join together and uh, communicate and practice together. In the discussion group uh, uh, for the winter preliminary, uh, there is a guy who helped me to prepare decks uh, called BB Gang Gang, which really helps me to get qualified. So that gave me lots of confidence and I think, yeah, I can do this. So I practice every day and I do nothing except Hearthstone actually. My family support me for playing this Hearthstone. When my father heard that uh, I got qualified from the winter preliminary, he is so surprised and uh, you know he is a very traditional person and uh, he even said like, uh, what, what game is this? I'm gonna download and play it too. In order to play against my opponent, I need to play perfectly this weekend because they are very strong and the heart makes mistakes, so I have to be as better as I can to beat them. Winning this tournament uh, is really important to me because uh, in the a Southern People QQ discussion group, uh, they will be very proud of me. I'm all sky high. I'm gonna win this tournament to make my QQ group proud. Studying abroad in the USA, taking his time to also play some Hearthstone. Well, I'm not exactly sure how much studying. He told me he plays Hearthstone all day. That's what he does, just practice all day with his QQ group. Uh, really awesome to see yet another uh, group represented here, because we saw the Latin American people show up with Snail and now Al Sky High, showing a very strong percentage of the players on ladder that you might not have heard of. Yeah, and I played against uh, BB Gun Gun a lot on ladder. That's another player that yeah. a lot of players that do play at the, the higher end of ladder uh, have seen a lot because he plays so much and I'm, I'm not surprised that he helps uh, with decks and things like that because talking with you know Neobility and Silent Storm they practice with him as well and he had a decent run through prelims but I'm sure he's glad to see that one of the guys he helped in Sky High made it this far. Yeah no doubt and that, that practice group has players that um, are also innovating a lot in the meta game. In fact, a couple of them uh, even write for things like you know the the meta snapshot and other different really popular things. Right now, nods and uh, I've heard direct of that piece approval. of content. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know those guys with those ideas who help explain the meta game at the top levels. It's from that group. And Sky High is the guy who practices with them too, as well as WTY Bill who has been eliminated. Let's go into game number two for Sky High to turn it around. He needs to win with his Warlock deck up against the Rogue. 
And uh, the, the Doomsayer threw me off a little bit, but I do remember that he does play that those kinds of interesting cards in this Warlock deck. Yeah, earlier in the tournament, we've seen Warlock come out ahead in this matchup, but it really is anyone's game, I feel like. Uh, there's definitely a lot of healing that you know Warlock has access to, but there's also a lot of burst damage that Rogue can threaten. You can't really feel comfortable getting yourself down to something like five life to get full value out of Reno. So you kind of need to play it for decent value, like 15 life or so. And a lot of times that, that lets the rogue take a win through board presence. Yeah, it's a really good point. We've seen it yesterday, I believe, where WTY Bill didn't even feel comfortable at 20 health against two minions, uh, or, or two, or sorry, two minions and a really small minion. I think yeah. it was a Thanos. Uh, the and, Arcane and, oh, Golem. Or, yeah, it was, it was yeah. just, he used a t Arcane Golem to clear, and then like Reno Jackson from that point. So it's like really hard sometimes to evaluate what Rogue can and can't do. Yeah, and, and Sky High, even though he's had a lot of success in the tournament so far, Warlock's been, I think, one of the decks that he's sort of struggled with. Uh, and um, it, this is sort of like a, a Chinese flair thing. We talked about how Sky has a Chinese American player. They really like to put tech cards in their decks. They tech more than any other region. And Reno Lock is already a deck that techs so much because they have room for those types of things. Sure. But Sky High has a tech card in there for every single type of situation. <laughs> yeah. uh, Doomsayer is, is, could be considered an anti-aggro tech card. You throw it down on two. Kazan Mystic, BGH, Mind Control Tech, you can see all of them in his hand. And a lot of those are common. Yep. Um, like three out of four of them or four out of five of them are common, but he has every single one. He even has Harrison and the Ooze. Harrison and Ooze, yeah. And I it, think he's uh, missing the Black Knight. And that's pretty much it. Is well, there any other I wouldn't put cards? it past him. I wouldn't put it past him to put that in there. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe a hungry time. crab just out of nowhere to kill the Warlock <laughs> Paladins. The, the Demon Silencer. <laughs> Light, Light's Justice. Oh, no, uh, Light's Champion. Exactly. Light's Champion, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's how you know the card's good, Dan. We can't remember what it's called. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's been working well for him up to this point. Deck's been doing well, and I mean, certainly half of his deck will be very effective in this matchup, and Sky High's gonna hope to draw that part of it. That's interesting. Demon Wrath, just to help clear it up a little bit. Oh! Ooh. We've Yikes. all been there. Yeah. The surprise dude. So that's the second Millhouse this tournament, actually. And yeah, we've actually seen, you know, a lot of the uh, high and low end of piloted Shredder drops. We saw a Doomsayer on day one. We've seen two mill houses. Uh, we saw the Wrath Guard in the game before, yeah. so and here he is coming down against the Jiraxis deck. How flavorful! Oh yeah. yeah. Well, uh, it's it's uh, that's a pretty intimidating board. You don't have a lot of minions that immediately deal with those four four stats, and Azure Drake pumps so many of the cards in Rogue. I'd be really nervous if I was Sky High. Yeah, he's in a terrible spot. The fact that, that was Millhouse was such a huge deal because this is a minion that doesn't like. First of all, it outputs a ton of damage, the same as you know a five mana Azure Drake. It survives things like Hellfire and Dark Bomb, so finding answers for it's very inconvenient. Like, the, the only good answers that some versions of Reno Lock might have are maybe like Ancient Watcher Shadow Flame. So occasionally you see cards mm. like Shadow Bolt, but, you know, Sky High did have to cut something to fit all these tech choices in, so I expect this Millhouse to do a lot of work. I'm going to backtrack here to challenge Raynad's lore knowledge. How dare you. Was it Millhouse? <laughs> wasn't it Wilfred Fizzlebang as the gnome who summons Jaraxxus as opposed to Millhouse oh, Manastorm? Oh man, now I'm a now I'm a bigot. All gnomes <laughs> look the same. To me. <laughs> Sorry, TJ. Oh, uh, you know what? It's the beards, man. They always mix you up. Was it Fizzlebang? <laughs> It yeah. is the Will's yeah. Fizzle Bang. That's why he is also a warlock. I'm so sorry, Ray Man. I think no, um, we can agree that I pride that myself my WoW knowledge. <laughs> Man, uh, Millhouse Mana Storm is a little bit sad that Pilot Shredder is going bye bye in standard. Because yeah. how often do we get to see Millhouse otherwise? Yeah, it was a card that uh, we used to play way back in beta once in a while. It was fun in things like Aggro Warrior on occasion. If you're feeling ambitious, you know. <laughs> and um, also just hated everything. Yeah. So uh, Amnesiac draws into a second fan here. He's got a lot of options for removal. I do like the idea of developing stuff, but we're also coming up on the turn where Al Sky High can use the oh, ultimate removal options. card. Or at least that's the way I like to think of it. Twisting Nether, mm -hmm. which does give a little hint of Whispers of the Old Gods, you know, the, the tentacles in that art. Yeah, some people might just run Lothab in here and play Fan of Knives without really thinking about it. The reason Amnesiac is taking his time here is because he is... He values the health on Lothab a lot. It's protecting it from things like Shadow Flame with a weak minion and Hellfire, Implosion. Uh, so he is just going to opt for this line of play. Amnesiac also recognizes the fact that we are coming up on that turn 8. Twisting Nether is not uncommon in Reno Lock decks, so it is a card worth thinking about, and he doesn't necessarily want to drop a Teacher or develop more minions to the board. He really wants to make sure that he is going to have 
uh, some type of minion on the board for uh, playing oil. So he's going to try and get value out of that as quick as he can because he knows that AoE is inevitable in Reno Lock. They run so much of it. So getting value while you can, while you have minions on the board, is really important. Yep, this wow. is the best possible play he could have Jeez. made. That's lethal against... Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, killing your opponent, damage. best possible play. <laughs> not, not only against AoE, but in general. Strong well, line, uh, I like it. He did pick up that deadly poison, so that's why he prep fanned into that possibility. And Amnesiac, once again, going for the... The, the, just in case lethal. I don't know how else to describe it, but it, it's like he makes the play just in case it does, and he's yeah. ahead enough that he can afford to to play with that margin. Yeah, it's nice to be in that kind of position. Uh, don't lose too much if that bricks, and looks really good if it works. So yeah, yeah. Great, great play. It's a swaggy and, lethal. That's what I like, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like we mentioned in the beginning of that match, I mean that's the reason Reno is not that effective against decks that can output that kind of burst damage. You know, you give Rogue enough time, it draws enough cards, and you take twenty out of nowhere. So it, it goes back to that play you mentioned with Bill, how he you know used a lot of resources to keep himself at twenty health. You know, at that huge amount of health, even though Chested only had four cards, those four cards could have been. Prep, Oil, Blade Flurry. Could have been the burst, and that's that's the scary thing. That's the scary thing. Yeah, for sure. And this is the second time today that he's done that, when he wrathed his own boom bot when he didn't need to, but ended up getting the lethal exactly that way because he was that far ahead. And another good recognition from Amnesiac, uh, who just needs to win one more with his warrior deck, his control warrior, up against this lineup, which is uh, looking pretty likely, depending on how things pan out. We'll see. Going into game at number three, how do you how do you pick the chances of going for a reverse sweep here, right now? Uh, Sky High has done it before, if I remember correctly, uh, in this tournament. Yeah, so it's a, it's a position he's comfortable with, and you know he I mean not comfortable, but he's confident that he can he can come back from this position because he's done it before. So I really want to see a control warrior mirror because Rain and I were talking about it earlier. Yeah. We have very different views on current control warrior. Mm -hmm. So I'm super excited to. He's sort of a, a control warrior like purist, and I'm like okay. a control warrior hipster. Okay. I'm always looking for the next best thing. TJ tries to draw cards. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that, man. Okay, yeah. I'm excited for it. Do you? Oh, so here's the one question: Do you ever play shield block in control warrior mirrors? Uh, yes. Okay. Now That's I do. That's interesting. I, I didn't used to. Okay, three weeks ago, uh -huh. I was a purist also. <laughs> I was. <laughs> you converted. I was, weeks somebody, some I was shown the ways by the disciple of new age control. Unless that, unless literally you're talking about Fibonacci, our lord and savior. No. I, I am not willing to accept your new doctrine. <laughs> uh, whispers of the, the old warrior mains. It's, uh, <laughs> I don't know about that, TJ. Anyway, uh, yeah, we got Reno Lock versus Warrior here. We've seen this matchup go both ways so far in the mm -hmm. tournament. Um, matchup both players are comfortable with. They've both won, uh, you know, several times playing against uh, this deck, but it really can be anyone's game. Cards like Harrison, of course, are very important, and the less experienced Warlocks will occasionally run out of Jiraxis and get punished immediately by it. But uh, Sky High is... Oh, there he is. Interesting. Sky is aware of that that possibility, so even though Jiraxis is a great tool that Warlock has access to, he might opt for a different uh, strategy for winning. And it'll be important, too, because... Uh, the Warrior doesn't draw nearly as fast as the Warlock. One of the ways that the Warlock can benefit uh, off of the slowness of the Warriors, it can take the turns to draw cards and then develop threats and then have a lot more gas while Warriors using a lot of one-to-one -one removal and then just getting outpaced towards the late stages of the game. Um, and another thing too is Sky does have that Reno Warlock, which is two weapon removal. It's not just yeah. the Harrison, but also uh, the little green ooze. But yeah. there's a there's a lot more situational cards in Reno Lock as opposed to what we've seen more this weekend, which was the Demon Handlock. A lot of their cards are dead for a, a large majority of the game. You don't find many opportunities to play Implosion, to play Demon Wrath, uh, to play cards like that. So so that that makes the deck a lot weaker. Uh, at least in the mid parts of the game, in the early parts of the game, then it's Demon Handlock. Yeah, sort absolutely of right about that. Uh, subtle misplay from Sky High, not attacking with that zombie chow. That's going to make it a little bit harder to fulfill his damage quest for the day. <laughs> uh, like, no, weapon pickups are pretty important. Uh, yeah. It was an interesting turn to play Doomsayer because Sky High had the option of just life tapping there, which is a play he was likely to make anyway. It did stop him from developing uh, an Imp Gang boss, but. Amnesiac recognizes Doomsayer as a card that's pretty tough to get value out of. Let's just run it out, get rid of this zombie chow trade for the turn. Yeah, and I think it's like you were mentioning too, um, 
know, the warrior needs to make sure to not lose too much armor in the beginning stages of the game, and the zombie child is always eternally be there. Now, was Amnijak one of the warriors in the tournament that was playing Gorhal? I think he was. he was. Yeah. So, interesting choice from Sky High to just run out Harrison right there, uh, rather than holding on to it. He does know he has access to Acidicus somewhere else in the deck, but <laughs> Gorhal is definitely one of Amnijak's best tools in this matchup. Absolutely, especially when you're not having the Giants to deal with compared to the traditional defensive Warlock decks. Uh, Reno Warlock, I mean, this one doesn't even run the Fugue and Stalo combination no. either, which also has a lot of threat behind it. You, you just can't find room in it with all the, you know, crazy tech cards that he has. So you're, you're hitting things like a Kazan Mystic that's played without a secret, an Imp Gang boss. You're hitting Belchers with that Gorehow, which is so good. Uh, Sky, as the game goes on. Sky High having to make a lot of uncomfortable plays this game. Running out of Demon Wrath just so that his hand isn't overloaded, so that he has the luxury to life tap more. He's he's playing Imp Gang boss huh. instead of, you know, Twilight Tre or Twilight Drake to enable that. It's just uh Sky is acknowledging that his hand size is a bit of a problem and he wants to keep aggressively tapping, so that's mm. the reason he's running out his AoE there. He that's didn't have mana to play the Twilight Drake there, didn't he? He did. He could have, but then if he played the Twilight Drake, he wouldn't be able to tap, I believe, right? Because then he'd be at 10 cards again. Yeah. So then he'd be stuck in this eternal position of just playing one card per turn. And it's like Rainhead pointed out, he just wants to be able to life tap every single turn. That's a pretty interesting play. I've never really seen that happen because I think most Warlocks have something reasonable to play and squeezing their mana for six. Yeah, one, one one key thing that happened a bit earlier that we didn't touch on is when he played Harrison Jones right off the top, he had to throw away a coin to not overdraw. And, True. and that's definitely an important card to hold on to if possible. No that's going to enable uh, potential Infernal off of Jaraxxus. So yeah, it, a big deal that he lost that coin. Okay, well there is a Sylvanas play, but there are ways to deal with it pretty easily. Uh, how how much do you want to load up this board? Do you want to start playing Defender of Argus and, and start getting a little bit more into it, or do you want to take a more conservative approach? Oh, I'd slam Defender. Absolutely. I, I, it's interesting to figure out whether it's better to taunt the Owl or the Imp Gang boss there. This this lets the Brawl be a little bit better for Sky High or much, much worse, depending on what comes out of it. Death does not scare me. Well, Amnesiac's still not going to be bothered by it. Death Lord's one of the best cards to combine with Brawl because whatever media gets pulled out is also eligible to die. Not to mention, there could be the chance that it pulls out one of the most valuable cards in this matchup. Um, cards like Jaraxxus, Jaraxxus, cards like even Reno Jackson to a yeah. certain extent. Yeah, Amnesiac has two Brawls, and he's very far behind on board, but he's willing to just play Death Lord to try to get, I suppose, more value out of Brawl, or maybe play one after the Death Lord's minion pops out of it. That's the key thing here. He doesn't want to play Death Lord after Brawling, because then whatever minion comes out of it, he actually has to deal with. Does Sky High actually run a reliable win condition, Arcane Golem? I believe that was WTY, Bill. Sky yeah. has more of the refreshment vendor, Kazan Mystic type yeah. style. So, Amnesiac knows that he has time. He can play greedy in this matchup because you're not going to really be pressured by the Reno lock, and he does have plenty of ways to deal with the board if it gets out of hand. So you might as well just throw out that Death Lord, be greedy with it, hope that it pulls out something really good like the Draxus, and go from there. Play the Brawl, get a lot of value out of it. So I like the way he's playing the matchup so far. So Sky High chose not to kill Death Lord in order to make his own board better against Brawl, right? I mean, he, he didn't attack there. That's a really heads up play. Yeah. Like, he's, he's, he recognized that Amnesiac's trying to get a big Brawl going, so he's just going to not attack with 10 power of minions in order to make that play more awkward. Now, Amnesiac has a way to punish this a little bit. He could slam his own Death Lord and then trade it in and then Brawl afterwards. But the key thing is, Amnesiac doesn't want to Brawl until after the Death Lord minions on the table. Yeah, and I think uh, that was exemplified by the fact that Sky High didn't develop another minion in Life Tap. Yeah. Uh, so I think it confirms Raynette's theory here. Mm -hmm. So that, again, pretty good play from now Sky High, but I think he's forced to try to trade it oh. to it. Draxus gets pulled out. Wow. Yeah, that is not what you want to see if you're Sky High here. <laughs> that is such a big deal. Yeah, TJ asked, "What is your win late game win condition?" That is one Draxus, of them. Yeah. Uh, the fact that you can't. Do those six six infernals anymore? It's a huge deal. Not to mention that um, the the Draxus itself is also a great way to just put pressure onto the warrior. 
uh, with like the weapon and stuff, assuming he didn't have Harrison. So I think uh, this is a really, really big deal. Yeah. It's like, how does, how does Sky High find a win from here? He, he loads up the board even more just because I think he realizes that if Amnesiac has Brawl, he has Brawl. There's just not much he can do. He needs to start loading up the board and applying pressure now. Yeah, Sky recognizes he's in a losing position, needs to get a card out of his hand so that he doesn't overdraw and opts for Sludge Belcher. He does, have, does leave a little bit something behind after a Brawl, so not not the worst yep. to run that out there. I mean, the best case scenario for Sky High is Draxus survives and bowls out another removal piece. Okay, that's a pretty decent minion. Yeah, that'll still most likely draw out the execute. Amnesiac doesn't have too much life to, to play with, so. Wow, Draxus has a very long death uh, sound clip there. Uh, uh, Sounds like he had, he had too many go. tacos for lunch. Uh, voice actor having to go the extra mile for that. For that <laughs> Again, but with more despair and anguish. He's getting paid by the seconds. <laughs> uh. That's what our card packs is paid for, <laughs> right there. Uh, Amnesiac really doesn't want to use his Execute. Does he want to use, what, Revenge instead? Uh, he has, yeah, he could attack he has the option, yeah, to nail in Revenge. Nice. I I don't know how I feel about this. Execute is a va valuable card. It makes sense that Amnesiac's trying to hold on to it, but he doesn't really have that much life to play with, and I feel like he's kind of in the trap of just making these cute plays over and over again, where he holds off on the Brawl, take a bit of extra damage, play the Revenge. I mean, he, even if he ends up winning the game, he is putting himself in kind of a riskier positions by doing this, whereas he had reasonable alternatives. Okay. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he had two executes in hand as well. Uh, revenge, like, in a lot of cases, some control decks like having multiple options as opposed to duplicate copies of the same ones. So that right. way they can pick the right card for the right situation. That's a very good point. You'd, you'd much rather have one of... Uh, like Gorhal not look... I mean, it is one of the best cards in the matchup for Amnesiac, but it's just not looking great here because he hasn't picked up too many of his armor cards. You know, shield blocks, we haven't seen Justicar Trueheart yet. Like, all of these things are very important to make Gorhal let you live by killing, you know, what, sure. if you get all six charges out. I can take the hit. Yeah, he's he's really holding on to those executes because he knows that those are sort of at this stage his most flexible removals. I'd say because he does have the slam and you're you're not guaranteed to ever have the armor uh, if you play the shield maiden, so. Well, Sky High did end up drawing that ooze after the Harrison just in time for Gorhal, which is a pretty important pickup for him. But yeah, the... Uh, the executes in Amnesiac's hand only have the one enabler and slam, but the interesting thing against Reno Lock is they don't actually play that many things you want to execute. There's Twilight Drake, there's Emperor. Draxus on the off chance, right? It gets pulled yep. out. Emperor and maybe like Boop. Reno himself. Yeah, Boom, Molten Giant. It sounds like a lot of cards, but it's only like, <laughs> it's only like six. It's only like six. Yeah, compared to like the, the eight plus, yeah. like eight to ten from a normal right, defense from hand handlock. Oh, from Demon Handlock, okay. So a lot of times it's kind of I tough got you, to find. Like, hey, thank you, thank you, Dan. <laughs> Well, in this case, uh, I mean, Sky High is ignoring the Shield Maiden. He knows also Revenge was used, so that's uh, one inconvenience out of the way. Yeah, Amnesiac has the option to brawl here, and he's going to do it, even though the minions he's killing are not that big. So Sky High is okay seeing a brawl like this. It's it's not any minions that he committed too much to. It's not really dealing with big threats. Hmm. Is that the best possible outcome that could have happened for Sky High? Uh, you can make an argument for Bran. Uh, just because of the, it's the strongest attack value, I think, but you can make an argument for Brand being better in the long so run. So had Amnesiac saved his revenge, he would have been able to deal with it that way, and instead he has to end up using the Execute on a one-health minion here. So it didn't get too much extra value out of the Execute that he saved earlier. Mm -hmm. That Soul Fire might be useful for pushing the last bits of damage. Yeah. At this point, it's just, you know, all hands on deck, pretty much, for Al Sky High. Yeah. Talk, about, uh, talk about having a bunch of misfits here. Trying to piece together a push. Yeah. Oh, that's, uh, that's the beautiful thing about Reno Lock. You draw a bunch of cards. It doesn't really matter what you're left with. You can just peck away at, at the Warrior's life total, and something something will end the game. I'm waiting for the old gods card, Muster for Reno. Summon a 3-3 three, three heal bot, a 3-3 three, three Earth Ring Farseer, a 4-2 BGH, and I mean, two, two they're two just missing kind of Sylvester of Stallone, and they have a nice movie coming up as a sequel to <laughs> The Replacements. Yeah, call it yeah. Doctor Doctor. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm having nightmares already. Uh, you know, how valuable is a card like at least Star Seeker in this deck, Raynad? In, in this matchup specifically? Yeah, it's a card that a lot of control warriors have decided to include to kind of have 
have as their only win condition besides Gorhal. The game gets drawn out, you want some way to end it against other control decks. So Elise, in theory, turns all of these cards that are difficult to get value out of, like shield block in the control matchup, turns them into threats. So lets you win those games that do come down to fatigue. And this does look like one of those games that might come down to that. Well, uh, Reno does end up getting to it. Look at the deck sizes as well. Sky High definitely is in his last third, maybe even less of his deck. Um, four, four cards. cards remaining. Wow. Very thin. And Amnesiac still has 13? Okay. So it's going to be to the point where Sky High runs out of cards, but he might be able to make a concerted push before it. Yeah. So probably Dr. Boom left. Yep. Not sure if we've seen a Molten Giant from Sky well, High, but that uh, could be a threat left in this deck. Yeah, this is uh, the case where sometimes you'd consider not drawing the card off Mortal Coil. Maybe you'd Mortal Coil first, but Sky High is just playing very aggressively. He wants to draw the rest of his deck, develop a bunch of minions. He knows the Brawls are out, and he's just trying to take advantage of the fact that Amnesiac has no board and a pretty low life total. So if he plays the Gore Howl here, he will move a minion. There's... Seven damage left on board. And seven or six, 13. six or seven, 13. He would, would he die to Hellfire Soulfire? I think it'd be very close. Depends on how he does the trades, right? I and don't think he would die, no. Yeah, because he would armor up afterwards yeah. as well. Have we seen a Dark Bomb on a Sky High yet? I don't believe so. No. So that's a card that's almost always in Warlock. So Sky High has a two out of three chance of drawing it next I think turn. he only has two cards left because the last turn he pulled Lotheb out from Death oh, Lord. Oh, good point, the Death Lord, yeah. Andrew. So, so Dr. Boom and Dark Bomb. So Hellfire, Dark Bomb, Soulfire gives him 10 points of burst. It's exactly oh, no. equal if it's in his deck. Is it's Siphon it? Soul, I think. Oh, you're right. So All either right. he doesn't run a last threat, oh, there it is, is Dark Bomb. All right. He does the math. Exact lethal and nice. a little bit of a BM. Yeah, I like it. A little stylish. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I love Hearthstone. Oh. So yeah. Wow. Sky High opting not the to kill his opponent. The next level BM. This is <laughs> this is the extended BM. Wow, that's so funny. Uh, <laughs> oh man, I like it. It's okay. It's okay. Nobody saw it. <laughs> he didn't attack with just, the Reno oh, Jackson. Just, oh, okay. Oh. I like it. Oh no, no, my emote. goodness. Commit. Oh wait. You Greetings. gotta do more. Oh. Play, you gotta oh. play the twisting oh. nether. Oh. So what happened there is Sky High missed Lethal, tried to cover it up by making it look like BM, and <laughs> that's, that's respectable. I like that recovery. It is. Nine it out is. of ten. That's a, it's Tempo a, Sky High confirmed. That's a heads up saving face play. I like yeah. that. Well, if you're if you're gonna go out like that, you as at least make it entertaining. And in this case, Sky High, he got a much needed win. I mean, that wasn't just a, a win because he, he he wanted to. He needed that win. Otherwise, he was out. Yeah, I mean, we've seen these these games where Reno Lock is not playing the Jaraxxus. It's actually beating the Warrior. You do have to draw everything kind of in the right order as the Warrior in order to be able to deal with, with all the threats that Warlock draws out, or, you know, draws out. It draws the whole deck, puts it all on the table, and even though these minions aren't impressive, you know, the 3-3s, three 4-2s, three 3-5s, it's still enough to end the game. I mean, come on, it's like a board of patrons. And sometimes yeah. those can pressure for the win. In this case, uh, Amnesiac got a lot of his cards, but I think... Like you were saying, he was forced to use Brawl on a board of implosion imps. Like yeah. That's not what he really wanted to do. Uh, and as a result, it looks like uh, Sky High has this small opening of a chance to come back in the series. Yeah, it goes back to him tapping every turn, because including the last turn where he tapped <laughs> including into Including the last turn. Uh, because <laughs> at the end, it. It, it did come down to those last few cards. And if he yeah. had missed a couple taps earlier in the game, he wouldn't have had the damage that he needed with Dark Bomb being you know, the last card in his deck. Mm -hmm. Uh, to to close the game out because yeah. Justicar would have kept gaining value, so it ended up being a really well played game by Sky High. I think absolutely. I mean, yeah. we saw a lot of unintuitive plays, Demon Wrath, just to get it out of the hand so he can keep life tapping. It, it all ended up mattering in the long run. Yeah. So so the macro strategy, like we said, is the important thing. So uh, whether or not you guys are choosing to uh, continue to support the Amnesiac, we saw that social media was really rallying for him. Uh, there's also a lot of people who still cheer for uh, Al Sky High, but just not directly on Twitter. Like we said, there's thousands of people in his practice group uh, that they're really looking for. So make sure if you're out there for Sky High and you want him to win, hashtag Al Sky High, get your votes in to support him as well. Uh, we still have this warrior remaining. We're getting one game closer potentially to having this warrior mirror, to which I am ready to be blown <laughs> away by the insight that TJ and Raynad will provide in contrast. We're, we're, I already asked the PA to, uh, yeah. to pop some popcorn for me. We're absolutely going to probably have the opposite view on place.
going through yeah. that series. It's great, man. That actually brings uh, a very us, balanced discussion. Uh, one of us will be correct, and one of us will be TJ. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, I can't wait. Oh, I'm so giddy for it. It's going to be so good. Mm. Well, looking forward to the next match. It also could just be the uh, the Druid yep. coming here from Sky High, and I feel like that's much more reasonable as well. Yep. Uh, very good percentages against Warrior. Great great win rates on paper. Now, we have seen Druid underperform this tournament. What's the score right now for Druid, TJ? Uh, it's 8-13 and 13 after Yikes. the victory. So I, You have to say, though, that's actually 8-8 eight and eight for the common mid-range list. 8-13 is including the Ramp Druid from Bill. Yeah, he lost oh, five you know total games with the Ramp Druid. Raynad, that is an extremely intelligent thing to say. I, I forgot about the uh, the Ramp Druid. Nah, it's two different, two different Druid lists. Yeah. Dragon Egg! Oh, I apologize, by the way. I read this uh, backwards. Amnesiac banned that Druid for, for good reason. So it yep. is the, the Paladin. It's the Egg Paladin that remains. This is the deck that he used to get through prelims. Uh, it is a very interesting form of Seeker Paladin that only runs, if I can remember, four secrets. Not four different secrets, four secrets total. So he runs one copy of, like, the, the popular, you know, Noble Sacrifice Avenge Competitive Spirit Redemption. Just one copy. But still, like the mysterious challenger, and then he puts double abusive, double or double dragon egg, and, and Nerubian. Does he egg, put so. only one challenger? Nope, still two challengers. No, still two challengers. It just makes the first one really good, and then you hope you don't draw the second one. And even if you do, though, it's it's still almost Boulder Fist Ogre with the stats. It's not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So like a double Doom Hammer approach. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Consistency of draw is the big deal, but unlike you know double Doom Hammer, like Raynat said, the body is still really strong for for its cost. Yeah, back when we saw the Grand Tournament come out, people were still trying to figure out the best way to build these Mysterious Challenger decks. And we saw a lot of the very low secret builds, and then we saw a lot of high secret builds, you know, up to 10, 11 secrets sometimes. Yeah. So yeah, this is, uh, harkens back to those days. Just the just the four, but we've definitely seen it be successful before. This still is a tough matchup, though. Um, I think you sacrifice, not consistency, I want to say, but you, you give more blowout potential to the Paladin deck by putting in sort of the egg package. Mm -hmm. uh, but against Warrior, it's just still super tough because of, you know, the plethora of early removal and Brawl is such a tough card. So many Paladin tech situation. choices yeah. in this Paladin. Ragnaros, Abusive Sergeant we don't see often, eggs to go, well, the Abusive to go with the eggs. It's a uh, pretty strong Doomsayer coming out from Amnesiac, though. Definitely not going to get a better one than that. No Death Rattles on Sky High's side. Is, th is that even considered tech at a point? Like, what, what threshold has just become a different type of Paladin altogether? Uh, it's, it's kind of the same general strategy. So I suppose you could call it Egg Secret Paladin or give it some different name, but the general core strategy is the same. The core cards are the same, but there are pretty big differences, I would say, as far as, like, the quantity of cards that differ from the standard list. Hey, it's Raynet here with another Paladin deck tech. Yeah. Would you say that the deck is average, or would you say it's excellent? Mm. Mm. <laughs> I got plenty more where that came I from, would. man. You know where to go, downstairs. I'll, I'll see you there. <laughs> you know, Amnesiac oh. here has the Whirlwind already to deal with it, but Al Sky High is just fearless. He's going to play the Haunted Creepers, and the sequencing is very important. The Death Rattle from the Death Spite will trigger first before the spiders spawn off the Death Rattle. So it's a very nice thing, and also because symmetry is awesome. There you go, Dan. Pretend like the joke didn't happen. I'm gonna try to as well. <laughs> the uh, yeah, unfortunate the the death rattle order here. Uh, it's gonna make it a bit harder for the creepers to to get cleared. But Belcher is very effective against a deck like Secret Paladin because really the only good answer for it is Blessing of Kings. So you usually have to trade a lot of stuff in. Unfortunately for Amnesiac, Sky High does have that blessing, and it's going to easily take this out. Yeah, but that brawl, brawl is the final say, uh, no matter how big the board gets. And I'll, of course, I guess Amnesiac's happy to see that and not a Mysterious Challenger, I suppose. Yeah. Or maybe he is. It depends on the situation, because he does have some removal options, like the uh, the brawl and the Death Spite still up. Yeah, it doesn't feel great to use a brawl and your Death Spite charge to clear a board of, you know, a couple two drops and a three drop. But it might be the play he has to end up making. The, the key cards in this matchup really are going to end up being Tyrion and Ragnaros potentially if uh, if there's another big game hunter target that services before the rag. Oh man. What? Bash seems to be pretty nice to line up the... It really is. The yeah. Death Spite attack. And now he's going to see also that's not Redemption, it's not uh, Avenge. Mm -hmm. 
So the thing is, I mean, even if it's Noble Sacrifice, it's not too bad to just go for it. Yeah, because worst case scenario, he's just left with, you know, the, the two 1-1s one -ones on the board yep. after that Hunter Creeper's killed from the Despite Whirlwind. I think Amnesiac is also trying to sequence the Death Rattles and understand it. If so, he, he doesn't yeah. really matter if you attack the Spiders at all versus yeah. attack the face. It's yeah. better to attack face with four free damage. And... Yeah, develop a lease. Amnesiac's starting to develop a bit of a board, kind of climb back into it. So the things you need to do to to beat Secret Paladin. Once that deck gets ahead, it's very good at staying ahead the entire game. Yeah. I also uh, forgot how much I need Golden Monkey in my life right now because it, we haven't actually gotten to see something awesome like that happen. No, which is a little bit surprising because there is a lot of control this weekend. Yeah. Um, control Warrior versus Control Warrior Mirror is one of the, the mirrors where it happens you know, more often than not. Uh, and also Control Warrior versus Priest, but there was absolutely no Priest brought to the top eight. Might be relevant if the, the Warriors end up matching up, but it's a pretty good draw for Amnesiac. Before his hand was looking a little feeble, just not really Ha lot, having any real punch to it. Uh, speaking of big punch, we got Big Daddy Tyrion and Ragnaros available this turn. So he chooses to go for Ragnaros first just to get the, the damage out, but that will conveniently line up into a big game hunter. Yep. yep. So Ragnaros, pretty fun, innovative card. But Mijak has the fun in his sights and is going to easily go down here. I mean, he has a big pistol. Just sure. look. It, it, Actually, I saw an art for Big Game Hunter one time, and compared to Deathwing or the size of Ragnaros, and it's literally like an ant to a to an oak tree. Yeah, and it's so funny just to imagine the idea of this big, this small little Big Game Hunter able to take it down. Such as Harston. Yeah, quite the card. Uh, and Noble Sacrifice, pretty strong follow-up though. Noble Sacrifice being very relevant on this board. I don't know if we've seen it, uh, but Sky High, if I remember back to the prelims. Uh, he was talking to Bill a lot, and they prepped a little bit together. And Bill's Egg Seeker Paladin list that he ran in the, in the prelims had a divine favor in it, and it was very similar to Sky High. So I wonder if he kept that as a tech card, maybe expecting a lot of control, because that'd be a really good card in this matchup. Allow yeah. him to refill his hand. Yeah, it's not uncommon to see one divine favor here and there in the Paladin deck. If it's drawn at the right time, it can just win you games outright against things like Reno Lock or Control Warrior. Absolutely. Amnesiac chooses not to equip the War Axe, and Sky High has a challenger, but how many? we've seen a few secrets already. Is that going to pull one or even zero? I think it's just, just going to pull an Avenge. Yeah, just yeah. the one secret. That might seem underwhelming, but on the bright side, Sky High has drawn more high-impact cards this game, like, you know, Abusive Sergeant, Ragnaros, instead of those secrets. So even though this challenger, when it comes down, isn't giving him as much value as we usually see, uh, it still had this hard to quantify value in making you draw less bad cards. Yeah, it's a really good point. And now Amnesiac's in an interesting spot. There's, a, there's still a lot of decent pressure on the board. Right now it's 14, and if he knows Avenge is the last one, he doesn't definitely just want to attack into uh, the secret here, unless he has a direct plan for removal. Yeah, he can just throw it on the Sylvanas, set up for a brawl, and just ignore the board, because he knows that there's nothing in the deck that's going to kill him the next turn. And he also sets up for an next turn lethal, so I just don't really see a way that Sky High claws back in this one. There's not really much in his deck besides a Sludge Belcher, I think, that would save him. Well, uh, that doesn't look like it. So he can navigate it to where he, he could steal a 1-1 and he wouldn't right. have to deal with it. Uh, but it's really risky. So I feel like that's your best chance. Yeah, it's the line of play Sky High has to take. Just hope for the best. Yeah. Get Hearthstone and trade in. Not, not, not too bad. So he stays alive, yeah. but it's still looking pretty <laughs> grim. Yeah, it's just that's not what you want to see at all. You want, you want to keep that six-one and threaten your opponent. Ooh, that wow. is the single best card Mujak could have drawn in his entire deck. There. That's... Welcome to the America's Champions. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's pretty powerful. That's going to allow him to mostly ignore the damage being output by Sky High. And at this point, Sky is going to need some massive card like Doctor Boom to get back into it. But Mujak already has the answer for it in Brawl. He does, and he also has ways to stop any board flood from overcoming it. Not to mention this guy, I might just die if uh, Amnesiac picks up just a single Grom. Yep. So Sky High picks up the Cog Hammer, which does introduce a taunt to stop uh, said Charger from going into it. And that might be pretty valuable, but depending on how the outcome comes on the other side of the brawl, I mean, it could also just be the, it doesn't really matter what he does. 
Yeah. So even with the cog hammer, I think Grom would still do it. Yeah, uh, Sky High sequences his plays correctly, though. Gonna be able to take out that just a car. Oh, he's gonna keep the one one around. Interesting. Well, now's a chance he just dies if the brawl lands on the just a car. Yeah. The one in five. The thing is, <laughs> oh, Amishak no. is aware that one of the only ways Sky High comes back is Dr. Boom, so right. I think he's gonna want to save that brawl. Okay. And then take his time, play Death Lord. Yeah, he, he's got health to work with. You're, when the Secret Paladin runs out of cards, mm -hmm. they don't really have burst. Yeah, there's a, a couple of rare Secret Paladin decks that run some type of burst, but he knows Rag is out of the way. And he knows that he's most likely only going to draw one card per turn. True. Maximum two cards per turn, uh, just because of if it's Divine Favor. So. Oh, one of the weakest draws in Sky High's deck. The Abusive Sergeant. But let's see what this pulls out from the Death Lord. It's almost certainly going to go down. Choosing to use his own life again. What will it be? Ooh. Uh, I, I guess at least it's a body. You, you didn't draw it and waste your entire turn. Guy has to trade there, or else he dies on board. That second brawl is gonna allow Amnesiac to play the first one if he wants, but Revenge is pretty good here as well. He Revenge. Has to... Oh, you're right, because Revenge also activates the Avenge buff, and then you can kill it off with the weapon and then leave Paladin with literally nothing. Yeah. He just doesn't want the Shield and Minibot to come out from this because the Avenge. Oh. Wow, nice. that was the worst possible scenario for him. Yeah. So this is the only one that he wouldn't be able to just kill off with the weapon. But it's still, it's not a big deal. I mean, he's at 21 health. He's got second brawl. He's not under any immediate pressure. I mean, that's a pretty good draw as well. Yeah, it's the second biggest minion in Sky High's deck after Dr. Boom. Definitely has to run that out. He just saw Brawl get played, so he's going to hero power. How many okay. cards does Amnesiac have left? We're still on the Grom to win here. Two revenges. Double Revenge does clear the board if he attacks first. Can also Brawl. Uh, a lot of options here for Amnesiac. Yeah, if he uses the Brawl, though, then he still doesn't really have an answer for Dr. Boom, because the Double Revenge, even if he's below 12 health, doesn't deal with the Dr. Boom. And on an empty board, you still deal with those that Boom Bot damage. So. Yeah. so this is kind of the cool thing, or the interesting thing about how Warrior decks like this work, is when you fit so much removal in your deck, once you slow the game down and you have everything under control, you can't just end the game with a big minion. All you do is keep drawing removal. So the idea is Justicar Trueheart is supposed to allow you to armor up every turn and help you like net some damage. But if Sky High just draws Dr. Boom here, since Amnesiac's given him so much time, he might just lose if that brawl doesn't go his way. And there went the activators for Grom too. So if he draws Grom, he's still a damage off lethal. So that's not an out for Amnesiac anymore. Yeah, so here we're gonna we're gonna see how like the warrior hero power matches up so poorly against the paladins. Oh man, nice draw though. And immediately played from Amnesiac and put it back up to 20 health, and now he has to trade both minions into it to stop from dying. Yep. Quite literally a huge draw, <laughs> both visually and uh, metaphorically here. Whoa! Oh, Wow, she went up that tree. That was like 3D. Yanked it down. Sky High had to go through that Shield Maiden to get to the end turn button. And uh, yeah, he saw a Dr. Boom. Lead. I saw a boom. Oh, does he play it though? He knows that that Amnesiac doesn't have. He knows that Amnesiac has spells in hand because he hasn't playing anything. Right. Yeah. But he's still gonna run it out. Okay. Well, Shield Slam guarantees that you can kill the boom. Yeah. At this point, it's gonna become very hard for Sky High to win. This this that Shield Slam pickup means Amnesiac basically guarantees that he can clear the board. Okay, Boombot survives, and that means I think Sky High is out of threats. I was expecting yeah. maybe Boom to survive, and then the Boombots shred the remaining armor, but that'd be just too cruel. And with Egg Paladin, you actually have uh, quite a few dead top decks. Yeah. You know, Nerubian Egg, Dragon Egg, if he has a second one. Those are cards that don't just do well, just top deck right off the right into your hand. Oh, Ooh. the Gore Howl! Amnesiac is going to the finals, sending Sky High home in fourth place congratulations we have our first person going to the grand finals it's 15 year old amnesiac yeah that just a really great performance and really good deck choices by amnesiac and uh realizing that uh opening up druid to be able to be played by bringing murloc paladin which not many people have experience with and which does counter a lot of those heavy control decks which he expected to be brought was really a smart choice so glad to see him in the finals
Yeah, it worked out pretty well for him. He navigated the decks well, had had good matchups. Like it was just pretty pretty convincing win. Yeah, and you know what I really like too is that he's playing his own style of decks, the small tweaks that he made yeah. as well. It's, he's not winning with the lineups that people are preparing for the most, right? We, we expect Druid, we expect Secret Paladin, and we speak Zoo Warlock. He's playing his own Fatigue style warrior. He's playing Murloc Paladin, really interesting stuff. And I can't wait to see what his thoughts are now that he's going to the Grand Finals. He's, uh, he's, he's waiting with Rob for a few words to talk about his win and what it's like advancing to the next round. Thank you, Dan. Amnesiac. You are the least happy looking player of all time for someone who just secured a spot to the final match. What's going through your head right now? I threw game three really badly. That was definitely a win. I got really lucky. I, I was happy with how I played the early game. I, I was patient. I got a lot of brawl value. I, the only thing that beat me with my line of play was Bran Lothab. I wasn't entirely sure if Bran was in his deck or not. And it turns out he didn't even have Lothab. But the turn I chose to attack the Twilight Drake in Revenge, I wound up, that, that was just awful. I'm really unhappy with how I played that. Just so, you have made it to the final match. Does it feel real? Are you excited about the prospect of going to the Hearthstone World Championship later this year? Yeah, I mean, I'm really excited. I'm I'm going to have to clear my head after literally throwing a game. That was bad. But, I'm, yeah, obviously, I'm, I'm really excited to be playing. Uh, he played great. It was a fun series. And, yeah, I am really excited. All right, aside from the sweet shirt they gave you, how else has Team Archon supported you in this tournament? Uh, you know, just being supportive on social media, my teammates individual, individually and as well as the team is just, everyone's been really supportive. They've been trying to get my name out there. Uh, they've been really good about it. I really appreciate it. All right. Well, congratulations. We look forward to you seeing you next. You'll be playing either Nostrum or Chess Dude. So we're going to toss it back over to the sidebar where TJ and Savitz are standing by. Sorry to disappoint everyone, it's in fact not TJ, I'm nowhere near that handsome. It's Sodal joined here with Savitz. And uh, before we get into the analysis of that match, congratulations to Amnesiac, he's our first finalist, but let's take a look at exactly how the bracket is breaking down right now. Yeah, so Amnesiac, the first one to go into the finals, and uh, next up will be the semi-finals between Nostam and Jess Dude to uh, figure out who's going to be his opponent. Yep, so Amnesiac waiting in the Grand Finals to find out who he is going to meet. But let's take a little closer look at how he got there. The series started out fairly straightforward, Savit. So Amnesiac just exhibiting solid play with his lineup. But we have a, a clip from Game 2 that shows exactly how he was uh, playing very solidly with his deck. Why don't you take us through this? Yeah, there's a lot of decisions here. If you look at the Rogue's hand, there's so, so many different lines of play. But he decides that he has the oil already, wants to start going for the phase, and uh, takes a really aggressive stance that's, that ends up paying off in the end. Yeah, so Lothab comes down to protect the existing board there, and we see just, I think, two turns later, he was able to capitalize on that momentum, really push through, bank that Tinker's oil onto the minions that Lothab helped protect there. Um, but moving on just to game three, this was a really interesting line that Savitz and I were very interested in. You can see Al, Al Sky High sat here with a very, very full hand, but let's go ahead and take a look at what he did. Yeah, so what Al Sky High ends up doing is throwing away the Demon Wrath. He, he chose this deck to go first up against that warrior. He had three decks, he knew that he has to win with all of those, and I believe he picked the deck that he was most comfortable with. He know, knows that he has to be life tapping a lot to find the right card, so he throws away the Demon Wrath to make room for a future life tapping. Yeah, he had other options that turn. He could have just played out a Twilight Drake, could have just played out a Sludge Belcher, but that wouldn't have made the room in his hand to allow him to keep life tapping every turn. But interestingly enough, it turned yeah. out being those life taps that pushed him all the way to fatigue. He was able just to clutch it out in the end with a little bit of theatrics with the uh, waiting, the delay on the dart bomb and the soul fire. But as you said, so important that he was able to life tap every turn. Yeah, that was not a misclick. He did not accidentally cast that Demon Wrath. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it looks strange. It's something that normally you just see in Freeze Mage mirrors, right? Spells being cast against an empty board. But in that case, very deliberate, makes the room in his hand, allows him to life tap. And we saw right at the end, he had a very finite window where he needed to draw that last bit of burn to be able to push before, you know, the Justicar was drawn straight afterwards that could start to pull him out of range. So those extra life taps that he allowed himself were actually really important to be able to get to that burn on time that ended up being his last card. Yeah, uh, we think we're ready to look at some of the highlights from the match.